Okay, so in this video, what we're gonna do is take a look at the align to spline tag, uh, which could be really helpful for doing things like a car going down a road, a train going down a track, um, pretty much anything where we want an object to follow and move along a spline, essentially using it as a motion path. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I do have some things already created here for us to uh, use or for me to use to show this. Um, I have a car model I've made. Now what's important about this is that uh, you'll see that everything's inside of a null and that's inside of another null. And um, we'll talk about why that is, uh, but that is worth mentioning. And then I've also created a spline, which will be what the car is going to move or follow along. Okay. Pretty straightforward here to get started. We're gonna select our car null, go to animation tags and choose align to spline. Now, it doesn't look like there's a whole lot here and that's because there isn't but we do need to specify the spline path. We'll take our spline, drop that into our spline path, and right away you'll see our car move to our spline. And in fact, now I can't move it. It's now locked. It's essentially kind of a, a constraint, okay? Now, the position property is how we get this to move along this, but notice how it's not facing the right way and it's not really changing the direction it's facing at all, okay? And that's because we need to turn this tangential option on. So once I click that on, now you'll see it's kind of rotating and following. However, it's not doing it the right way and it's already changed it, but originally my car was facing about you know this way. And so it was built along the X axis. So that is the axis I want it to kind of follow on. And now with this, we can see the car is moving, but, and I know it's not pretty, it's not, very obvious, the car is actually backwards. If I hit play, you'll see I have my little exhaust here, which kind of lets us know. But yeah, it's going the wrong way. Now, maybe that's the way we want, okay? But if we do need to rotate this, that's where having that second null comes in handy. So I can just rotate this, and now it will move the right way. So I can go ahead, keyframe this, the position, go to zero, do 100, that looks good to me. Now you may notice that the movement here is kind of fast, not very even, and that has to do with the points that are on this line and how they're not equally spaced. So what I like to do to help with that is switch the intermediate point type here from adaptive to uniform, okay, and then increase this as high as I need to go. Maybe something like, 40, right? And now what I'm gonna do is right click and do current state to object. And it doesn't look like anything changed on my spline, but if I select my second spline, notice how there's all these points. So I'm actually gonna get rid of this first one so we're not confused, okay? My animation's gonna stop for a second because now I want to drag in this new spline in here that has those extra points, okay? so. These points are now evenly spaced. My object is gonna move at a constant speed, all right? Now, it's still way too fast, okay? But at least it's moving at the same speed the entire time. And to, to really kind of demonstrate that, what I can do, come here to my pen tool and just make a simple path where there are two points far away, two points close together. Um, and I was hoping to demo, actually, let's do this. Connect the objects and delete update this. Uh, if you were wondering what this segment property does, it allows us to choose what segment or part of the spline we want to use because we now have two parts. We have the straight one I made in, in the, the row. So I can switch this to say one and notice here how it goes really fast when the points are far apart, but then really slow when the points are close together. And so that's what we were trying to correct. Okay, now we didn't do the greatest job because the spline is still too short, but still, that is what we're working with, okay? So I'll switch this to uh, segment one, get rid of this, and delete. Now, there's one last thing I want to talk about with this, and that is the rail option here. So right now, we got really lucky that this is flat, and honestly, not great that I have all these points, but hopefully you'll get the idea. I'm gonna duplicate this spline, and I'll call this rail. I'm just gonna 
move it off to the side a little bit. So think of this now like a train track, right? Where it requires two, okay? So I can use my rail and the rail path and I wouldn't expect much to change until I start moving this up or down. So this will really help, you can kind of see what's happening there, um, determine what the angle should be, right? Once again, think train track, roller coaster track, any kind of track. Okay. Now, um, if this was actually following along a road that, you know, wasn't perfectly flat, this can be a way to help get the car to stay kind of flat on the road, um, a little bit. Uh, obviously though, you would want to have fewer points when you make adjustments. Okay. Now I got a lot of points here. I don't think there's a way to optimize. I see. Yeah. I don't think that's going to work since that's more of a polygon tool thing here. Um, spline smooth. Hey, there we go. Problem with this is that I think I may be doing it to the rail, but no problem. Cause we will just say what rail and use this one again. Uh, now it's trying to use the, the same spline for the rail as the regular one. So we don't want that, but you know, if I didn't have something like this, where I can now make adjustments a little bit easier. I don't need that smooth. Just select a point. Maybe do something like that. And then like this. Oof. And this is where just switching the interpolation smooth again may help kind of flatten that out a little bit. This is still going to be really rough. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not expecting the most amazing thing here, but as it's going up, um, it can try, it can get a little bit off. And if we wanted this to kind of bank or follow, that's where the rail spline um, can come in handy. So let's see if we can't get that to work for us. All this rail, move it. And I'm really just going to focus on this part here. Okay. Since that's the part I'm most concerned with, although almost like I need to move it to the other side. Get it to flip the right way. There we go. Yeah. So you can kind of see now how I'm able to guide the angle as this moves up, as this moves down. Okay. <laughs> and that's what is that like Mr. Toad's Wild Ride or something? That's kind of kind of nuts. But uh hopefully you get the idea with that. And um, I do have a video coming up, and it's where I got the idea for this one. Um, that I'm gonna be creating a whole low poly scene, um, going over the modeling. Um, animation of a scene using, you know, starting with this car, we're going to make some trees, a landscape, and a road that is not flat uh, that will have this car moving uh, and going through it along with a bus. Um, so keep an eye out for that. But that will do it for this video. Hopefully that helps clear up any confusion, shows you how to use the align to spline tag. Uh, if there's anything else you would like to see, please just let me know.